Hello there everyone and welcome back to another movie review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Iron Man 2, continuing my MCU review series leading up to Avengers Endgame, which comes out in about two weeks. I do want to finish reviewing Phase 1 of the MCU, which is Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, and The Avengers. I want to review all of those before Avengers Endgame comes out and hopefully continue the MCU review series after that. So I'm going to start with a summary. So after the events of Iron Man 1, the world obviously now knows that Tony Stark is Iron Man, and all of the governments and companies around the world are trying to recreate his technology to make their own form of super soldier in some sort of powered suit. The American government now is trying to take the Iron Man suit away from Tony Stark, believing it's dangerous, which has obvious reasons to be true. But Tony Stark, through the fame of being Iron Man and being rich and famous already, his ego and his cockiness has all gone to his head and he just brushes everyone off and he's now hosting something called the Stark Expo to show off all of his tech. The only one who was able to recreate anything near the Iron Man suit was a man named Ivan Vanko who was the son of a Russian scientist who defected during the Cold War. His name was Anton Vanko and he worked with Howard Stark to develop the original arc reactor. So Ivan is able to create his own version of his suit based off of the blueprints that his father left behind before he died. Tony also realizes that one of the chips inside of the arc reactor in his chest is actually giving him palladium poisoning. And so he's getting weaker, he is resorting to alcoholism and being rude to his friends, and his life is basically just going downhill. Ivan Vanko actually teams up with the head of another big American company, whose name is Justin Hammer, head of Hammer Industries, a rival company to Stark Industries, and they work together to try to build something called the Iron Legion, which is just a bunch of Iron Man type suits that Hammer wants to sell to the American military. So generally, the story covers Tony's internal conflict, dealing with his fame and his ego, and of course the alcoholism and, and, and palladium poisoning, but also battling uh, Ivan Vanko and Justin Hammer as they sort of try to one-up him. Now that that's done, I want to talk about some of the negative points I have about this movie. First off, I wish they'd gone more in depth on the history of the Vankos. Anton Vanko and Howard Stark's relationship would have been really cool to see if they had done flashbacks or something to show what happened between the two of them, but instead you just get Ivan Vanko who doesn't really have much development and sort of just after revenge for his father, which is a pretty stereotypical villain archetype and it didn't come off as quite as interesting. Another negative is that this movie is just based way too hard on the original. None of the other MCU movies are focused as hard at continuing the story of a character, so you really do need to have seen Iron Man 1 to understand Iron Man 2. I also have issues with the pacing of this movie. Some of the scenes don't can really connect to each other. They have a story going through, but it doesn't really flow. There's a lot of jumping from place to place cuts, and it just makes it feel a little awkward. Finally, this movie doesn't have anywhere near as much the amount of memorable dialogue that the original had, which is what made me enjoy the first movie so much. And if they had just developed the dialogue further, it would have lifted up all the scenes that felt a little clunky and made the entire movie more enjoyable. So now for the positives. So Iron Man 2 really is the peak of Tony Stark as the Tony Stark character. His ego is overinflated, he's high on the success from the first movie, and he just exudes overconfidence in every single scene. And that leans into my main point about this movie, is that every scene is really designed to show some aspect of Tony's personality. His ego is reflected in the palladium poisoning and the alcoholism that he eventually succumbs to throughout the course of the movie, which keeps his overconfidence in check and reflects really how he is having internal conflict with what he wants to do with being famous and have responsibility of being a superhero. Another one of the highlights of this movie is the supporting characters. Um, Rhodey, now played by Don Cheadle, which is a very big upgrade, and Natasha Romanoff, the spy-slash-secret agent-slash-secretary uh, of Tony Stark, who's Black Widow, as you know through the other MCU movies, are, they both have a good amount of development, they both have a good impact on the plot, and it's just far cry to what the first movie had, which was essentially just Pepper Potts and a little bit of Happy Hogan. I also like the villains in this film a lot more than I liked Obadiah Stane from the first movie. They get quite a bit of time by themselves in scenes that don't involve Tony Stark, so you're able to get a sense of their relationship, what their personalities are, what their goals are, what their conflicts are, and it makes them better characters more interesting to follow, especially when you're not seeing uh, Tony on screen, which felt kind of strange in the first movie. Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer is also just a treat. 
I love watching Sam Rockwell in anything, and he's a perfect counter to Tony Stark's ego. He calls him Anthony to kind of degrade him, and he has his own sort of boyish personality that feeds into their conflict and rivalry. Also, finally, this movie really helps tie in a lot more to the MCU. There are nods to Thor and Captain America, a lot of Coulson and Nick Fury, obviously uh, Black Widow agent Romanoff is involved. And it's those connections that really help me enjoy this movie a lot more. It's those connections to the MCU and the small details you're able to notice that are my favorite aspect. And it's just really enjoyable to sort of watch in the background and listen to dialogue and try to notice things. Overall, I actually really liked Iron Man 2. I heard a lot of people saying beforehand that it was the worst of the Iron Man trilogy, that it was one of the worst of the MCU, and in all honesty, I just can't agree with that. It's definitely the most character-focused movie of the MCU. It's entirely based on Tony's personality, his internal conflict, and how he's perceiving the rest of the world, and how the rest of the world is perceiving him, and I really enjoyed that. So in the end, I give Iron Man 2 a 4 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it a lot more than I th thought I would going into it, and I definitely recommend it. It's a good part of the MCU and a great part of the Iron Man trilogy, which I think is my favorite trilogy out of any of the trilogies or movie series that they have developed in the MCU. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you like this sort of shorter, more concise format that I'm trying to go for in my editing, and I will see you guys in another video. Bye.